this is, this is, this is. So check it out, you guys. Uh, brand new episode here. I was just thinking about and kind of just, <laughs> I don't know. I was, um, I was daydreaming about this movie, Prey, that's, I think it's just out now. It's already out. But it's, it's like Predator, but a new, a new vibe. Like, you know, um, anyway, I love the movie Predator. Predator is, it's my jam. I love that movie. There's so much, like, I remember everything about that movie, whereas most movies I've seen in my life, I'll be like, yeah, I've seen that movie, but I honestly don't even remember how it ends. You know, like that kind of thing. And there's a few movies, of course, I remember everything about, like Big Lebowski, things like that. But um, I love Predator. You know, get to the chopper. All the all the one-liners, stick around. Like, I, just, I just remember Yuri and I would just would would uh, recite lines from that movie, kind of in a fun, funny way. But um, I just loved that movie. It was so good. You know, Jesse the Body Ventura is in it. He looks so badass. He's like, he's got the the big chew bulge in his cheek, um, always spitting on things. <laughs> Carl Weathers, who you may know him from Rocky as uh, Apollo Creed, but he he plays. Arnold Schwarzenegger's like right hand man and he you know they they come up and they like they uh is what I'm saying but they're badass everybody looks like a, a comic book character or um everybody looks like like a um an action figure that's a better way to describe it so action figures that are just like everybody's ripped right and the thing is is these are they're real muscles because back then they weren't using CGI in the same way that they do now, right? And um, I don't know. It's just, I love that movie. So now there's a new one that's out, Prey, and it takes place 300 years from now, or sorry, 300 years in the past, um, you know, when indigenous people were, were here in North America, things like that. And I haven't seen the movie, obviously, clearly. Uh, but I'm excited to see it because I've kind of heard rumblings that it's good. Although, you know, it could be bad. I don't know. It, it's just, you can't necessarily always believe the hype. But um, if anybody's seen it, let me know. Let me know if it's uh, worth my time. Um, these days, we're getting real busy with MXPX. And I'm just busy in general with between family and MXPX and... You know, we're finishing up this new record, and I know I keep, we're always finishing the new, it, things take a long time, because, you know, we're not sitting there necessarily working on it 24-7, but we have been working on it for quite a while, and, and it's it's getting close, so um, we'll start showing you guys some stuff soon, I'm sure, um, and, and, and other projects, too. We, uh, we got some things happening, so um excited we are going to be in canada again september 17th music for cancer fest um goldfinger played uh, a couple years ago i think it was 2018 something like that and it was so much fun we had a blast um the set was great so i'm really looking forward to bringing mxpx and bringing bringing our raw power up to quebec so if you're in the quebec area St. Catherine is the name of, St. Therese, sorry. St. Therese is the name of the town that it actually takes place in, which is basically um, a suburb of Montreal. Yeah, so I'm excited. Um, we will be, we'll be there. All right, let's get to some voicemails, you guys. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of voicemails, please, if you want to be on the podcast or if you have a question, you want me to talk about a topic, please call me 360-830-6660. It's a Google voicemail account. So um, only please just leave me a voicemail if you are interested in the podcast and you have a question. Um, and it doesn't have to be a question. You can have a comment. You could have uh, an idea. Anything interesting. Uh, I love it. So I appreciate all the calls we've been getting lately. Uh, these voicemail 
episodes are, are fast becoming favorites of mine for sure. So thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, music talk from last week because it was all about, it was all about, was it last week or the week before? Excuse me. It might've been the week before, excuse me, 420. I was talking about, um, you know, uh, teenage fan club. I was, you know, all these records that I was really, really into, um, right when I was kind of getting into music, but even right after that, um, good stuff. Anyway, just if you missed any of them and you want to watch some of the stuff, go to my YouTube. It's Mike Herrera video, Mike Herrera, my name video. Uh, the YouTube's there. Um, I'll put up acoustic stuff now and again. I'll put up whatever stuff, but also heavy podcast uh, going on lately with my YouTube. So anyway, thank you guys. And thanks for checking out mxpx.com. Um, anytime you buy anything off of that, it really helps us keep the lights on over here. It keeps us working on new music, working on being creative. And, and honestly, it's been great, going really great. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Um, Let's do it. Let's hear from you guys. Voicemail. Hi, Mike. This is Josh from Nebraska yet again. I, like you, have been playing in bands since I was a teenager. Unlike you, I have not had any kind of success, and I have not been in the same band since I was in high school. Um, me, personally, when I look back on some of my old songs in my old band, Sometimes I look back and cringe, and other times I'm still proud of what was written, even as, especially as my politics, worldview, religious views has changed. So I'm curious for you, what early MXPX stuff, whether it be lyrically, song structure, riffs, whatever it might be, what early MXPX stuff do you look back and are either cringing at or still super proud of. Thanks so much for answering our question. Um, can't wait for the new stuff. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, that's an interesting one. I like it. I like it. Um, there's so many cringe-worthy songs that I've written. Um, when I started writing, it was... I would say probably around 1991. Um, if MXP start, if MXP started at ni in 92, I was at least writing a year before that. So let's say 1990, 1991, I was uh, probably 13. At my youngest, I was probably 13 trying to write songs. I just remember, and, and I was probably more like 14, but I, I got to remember... When I was a kid, all of the things happening were happening in such a compressed time frame, and so much happened, whereas nowadays it takes three days to, you know, get somebody to email you back an answer of if whether or not they want to meet you for coffee. So I mean, it's just like things take longer these days is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so uh, here we are. Um, I'm... I'm playing with some guys, this guy, uh, Jeremy, who is a drummer and, well, even before that, actually, let's go, let's, let's back up. Let's Don K. I've talked about Don K before. He was just a friend of mine. Um, kind of, uh, real nice guy, but different from me. You know, he, he, uh, he, he was allowed to watch a ton of TV. He was allowed to just like kind of do his own thing. Whereas I, I was as a kid, I was allowed to do plenty of things, but I wasn't necessarily allowed to watch TV all day. We didn't have cable or anything like that. We just had like an antenna. So we had like three channels. So um, mostly what I did was I just played outside. And um, I didn't know about as much music as Don. So Don introduced me to social distortion. He introduced me to the Ramones. And this is me just discovering punk. And... You know, I always talk about my, well, I don't always talk about, but I've talked about my cousin in the past as well. My cousin and my sister were into New Wave, and my cousin Luana was into punk. And she introduced me to Rollins Band, which was kind of not really punk. It was like hard rock. But he was from 
Black Flag, which I didn't know at the time. I didn't even know that. You know, I just knew. I actually, I knew about Black Flag, but I didn't, but I had Black Flag the first four years, um, which is a, an album with, of like their first four seven inches, which doesn't include Henry L Rollins. It has, you know, Des Kadena and it has like their first three singers. So, uh, Henry Rollins didn't enter the picture until later. So like all these things are disconnected for me, you know, with, with sort of just, just starting to discover punk rock. Um, you know, I heard Danzig and didn't know that he was the same guy as the Misfits, you know, like things like that. Like, you, you know, and, and like I said, back then it was compressed. So it was probably like, I found out within a few months, but as I'm discovering this music, I, I, I don't know anything about these people and the bands that they were in or, or this and that, you know. In due time, in due time, I found out. But, you know, I also was, I was inspired by punk rock to, to um, you know, write songs because back to Don Kay, he showed me, you know, Social Distortion, um, some, well, he had like a couple records. He had, he had Self-Titled, which incidentally, Self-Titled was the first one he let me, let me listen to which had like Ball and Chain, Story of My Life, and had that cover of Ring of Fire, I think. And that album was produced and mixed by Dave Jordan, the same Dave Jordan that produced our album Before Everything and After. So, you know, I wasn't even in a band. Like this is literally all these things, you know, the universe is so... I don't know. It's just so connected, right? Like, um, here I am in this in this bedroom in Seabeck, Washington, which is sort of out up in the mountain mountainous forested region, out on the Hood Canal of of where we live in Kitsap County. So, um, in Washington State, anyway, you know, it takes like 15, 20 minutes to get to his house, which nowadays doesn't seem like very long, but back then it was like that's far. You know, <laughs> to get your parents to drive you 10, 20 minutes somewhere was hard in those days. And nowadays it's, it's almost like it takes 40 minutes to get anywhere. Not really, not in Bremerton, but, but in, in some, some of the crazier areas, like in LA for sure. I mean, that's like across town is, is 40 minutes, um, across your neighborhood. That is anyway, I digress. Let's get back to. Don K and and you know he he's showing me these these albums and there was more if I if I kind of sat and thought about what other albums he introduced me to it's hard to remember like remember exactly which albums that I heard first from him necessarily because I mean my sister was listening to New Order and uh, Depeche Mode and and like things like that you know so like I was really into into like the underground stuff that was like the best of the underground stuff. Like say, I, I would say new order is one of those and, um, soul Div uh, joy, sorry, soul division, joy division. Another one like that blew my mind And and you know, I didn't know much about punk when I heard joy division for the first time. So I'm hearing joy division at the same time. I'm hearing say like social distortion and, um, and, and, maybe the first tape I ever got handed to me like to keep was Violent Femmes, um, Violent Femmes, Blister in the Sun or whatever that album is called. I think it's called Blister in the Sun, but I could be wrong. That Maybe that's their greatest hits album. But um, whatever that, that album is that, that has um, Please, Please, Please Do Not Go, it's got, um, um, it's got Blister in the Sun, it's got Kiss Off, it's got, that's Blister in the Sun. So, um, that blew my mind. I mean, as you can imagine, like that being one of the first punk type albums that I owned and that I heard really, really blew my mind. And from there I got into the descendants. Somebody at school had a, a tape and they like, let me borrow it. And it was, uh, I think it was Aaron, my buddy, Aaron Coleman. He, uh, we were just kind of like school friends. We didn't hang out outside of school really, but 
we were kind of similar in in that we liked punk music and we kind of were interested in it. We we're just just getting into it. So uh, from there, you know, I got a job, um, a, a great way to discover music and discover new things is working at a restaurant, working in a kitchen. You know, I got a job, um, of course, landscaping was my first job at 14. And that's, that's how I met, um, I became good friends with Jeremy, who was uh, going to be the first drummer of the band that I was trying to start, and it just all fell apart. Um, but I mistakenly introduced him to the best, most popular punk band in town, uh, Bad Juju. And they're great guys. Like, I, I didn't ever actually... I'm very naive, so I just kind of, like, didn't even realize it. And I was like, eh, oh, well. But anyway, what happened was that I was friends with them, and they inspired me to start a band, to be honest. Um, so I'm getting all these these influences from everywhere all at once in a very short amount of time. And I know I've blown through your question, Josh, but, but, uh, I hope this is somewhat interesting. Anyway, um, I, I, I went to their practice and their drummer was moving away. And these guys were, if I was in, I was probably in, in ninth grade at this point, I was in ninth grade and I didn't know Yuri yet, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't know, you know, Andy hadn't really started. We hadn't started playing together, Andy Hustead and I, for MX Pigs. So what happened was I was just hanging out with Bad Juju at their practices down the street from my house. I could ride my bike down there. And their drummer was moving away, so I got a crazy idea. And I was like, I know a drummer. My buddy Jeremy, he's a drummer. So, so And Jeremy was a great drummer. He, he was from a musical family. And so I brought him over. He jammed the hell out of those drums. And the guy, the guys in Bad Juju were like, whoa, this is, dude, this guy's good, you know? And so, you know, he started playing with them. And they went like this, in t at least locally and around, like, our area, our scene. Bad Juju was kicking ass locally. Like, they were putting on shows or doing shows that their friends were putting on and really sounding great you know they had a live show that really was cool um it, it, that that's probably what inspired me to like care about you know your your live set list and like what you do and how you come out and and of course that's what you do when you're a performer you you put on a show but i didn't know that at the time i just thought okay you just get up and play but there's obviously more to it than that and so anyway bad juju went on and, and here i am without a drummer and few dudes that can barely play and I don't even know how to play I was just singing at the time and I just realized I, I'm just gonna start playing you know bass and singing myself and I started writing songs at that point so here we are back to songwriting and old songs so my process was writing songs on my my mom's uh, a classical acoustic guitar it was like a nylon string guitar so I used that as a bass guitar um, for like a, almost a year until I could afford to buy my own bass, which I did. My mom put half the money in and I put the other half. I think I just told this story the other day uh, on the podcast a couple weeks ago, but I won't tell the same story, but it, that story was about having getting my first Ernie Ball and layaway and all, and all that. But anyway, I uh, played it on, I played these songs on a, on a classical guitar and I would go, all right, I need two parts to the song. I need do 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 do. There's the verse, and then do 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 backwards. Do 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 do. That's what Lumpy from Bad Juju told me. He's like, if you if you need a part, you know, you need a part, so you come up with a part, and then just play it backwards, and that's another part. So I'm like, okay. So I mean, that literally like got me started writing songs and, and lyrically I just wrote, wrote about what I was thinking in my head and what was going on in front of me and and um you know uh, the first song I ever wrote was called acid trip um I'm on an acid trip. I've never done acid but I thought that's what you write songs about like 
drugs and <laughs> crazy. <laughs> How funny is it? This uh, the first song I ever wrote was called Acid Trip, and uh, my band's called MXPX. So hey, let's go. Um, but that wasn't an, it. Never was an MXPX song. That was just a song I wrote with Don K. And then later on, when you you know the first song I wrote for MXPX was special report and and we released that i think um on our kickstarter or something like that on the box set something no it was it was on our it was on our kickstarter for our self-titled album we released a floppy disc of a song called special report and that was the first song i ever wrote for mxpx boom no that's just wild but um not a great song. None of those songs are great. Some of them, I think, to listen to the whole song, it would be cringe for sure, all of them. There's probably parts that are like, yeah, that's cool. I, I think that's pretty decent, you know? So, um, now, as far as, like, the songs we've released that are cringe, there's maybe a few parts that are cringy where I'm like, eh, I wish I hadn't write, written it like that, or I don't believe that anymore. But... Honestly, it's it's um, it's strange because people see your music as who you are, and it is who I am. But also, when you write a lot of songs, some of those songs can be autobiographical, and then some of those songs, after a while, you kind of like, I want to write about something else. So you write about somebody else's story, and and people still assume that you're still writing about yourself. So in general. Yeah, I mean, I write all about, all about things that I that I think about, you know, but uh, things that worry me or whatever, you know. But I, uh, as far as cringeworthy, you know, you can't change it. So um, if it's super cringeworthy, we just don't play it live, of course. But um, it doesn't mean I don't want people to listen to it. If they like it, they like it. You know, people have different tastes. There's, there's you know, we're just trying to learn how to play and sing better and, and record better. And, and and better doesn't mean like more perfect because like we've talked about, <laughs> you can easily make something perfect. It's, it's doing it in a real way because not everybody's trying to do it for real, but we're trying to like, really make a good sounding representation of what we might sound like live on our studio albums. And I don't feel like we've ever really gotten there. I think the last self-titled record's the closest. This new record we're working on will be, it'll sound different than that, but it will, I, I love the way it sounds. So I think it's a, another, it's another notch up the ladder towards perfection. Boom, boom, just working. So, all right. I know I didn't fully answer your question, but let's go to the next one. Thanks for asking. Hey, what's up, Mike? My name is Aaron from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. You mentioned Regina on a, a few episodes ago, so that was pretty cool to hear the name of my city. Uh, probably not a city many people have heard of. Uh, anyways, huge longtime fan. MXPX changed my life in lots of ways. Uh, I've got a uh, four-part question here for you. I'll try to get through it quickly. The first thing I want to touch on is collaborations. And XPX has collaborated with a lot of different artists over the years. And so I was just curious as if to, there was any that you were still hoping to or would love to collaborate with in the future. Now I'd love to hear about who that might be. Uh, the second thing... Okay, let me, let me answer that and we'll move on. All right, Aaron. Yeah, man, Regina... Nice town. <laughs> always, uh, always nice to be up north. Um, collaborations. Speaking of up north, you know we've collaborated with uh, the Simple Plan guys for a couple things. Um, always a pleasure to work with them. Um, most notably, really, you know, recently, Pierre Bouvier, their singer, sang on our song December. It's a Christmas song we released a couple years ago. And Emily Whitehurst is also singing on that. And, you know, Emily's been on the acoustic um, acoustic album we put out, Acoustic Collection, it's called. She sings tons of harmonies on that. She makes uh, an appearance on our latest live album, 
um, singing on Tomorrow's Another Day. She sings harmonies and she takes her own second verse. It's great. And the, uh, the album's called Southbound to San Antonio. And that's where she lives now. She lives in San Antonio. So uh, we just thought we'd bring her out. It was great. So yeah, we love, uh, we always love having Emily sing on things. Um, we had uh, Callie Wolf sing on Say Yes, our song Say Yes. And uh, she's in a band called Rivals. And they're, they're kind of like up and coming, really doing great, really sound super modern, super cool. Her voice is huge. So it was cool to have her. And they're on tour all the time, like probably on tour right now. Um, you know, in the past, we've had so many of our friends, you know, singing on our stuff. Uh, let's see who, N Newfound Glory. We've had, we've had Newfound Glory guys. We've had Mill and Colin singing on uh, the Broken Bones song. We've had uh, Good Charlotte Boys singing on a couple of our songs on, on uh, Before Everything and After. We had uh, Greg Hetson, uh, formerly of Bad Religion, but uh, he's the guitar player of Circle Jerks. He uh, played the, the riff part on on um, Downfall of West Western Civilization on Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. Uh, I need some water. Mm. And um, I mean, I'm just naming collabs that I'm thinking of. I mean, there's so many more. There's so many more. Chris Rowe. Chris Rose sang on a bunch of things. Um, always love having all those guys singing on it and ladies. Um, it's been cool. I think um, there's been some collabs that we've tried that we haven't, that we didn't use or um, only just, it just didn't quite work or something like that. But, um, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's fun to do, and it just adds a little something, something different, something new to the mix, and that's why I love doing collabs. But mostly because it's fun, you get to you get to do some things with uh, some of your friends that you normally wouldn't do. Is uh, over your course of your discography, you've had a lot of melodic hardcore influences, um, songs like a theme fiasco, um, and lots of albums have had that. Uh, but there wasn't really any of that on the self-titled, and so I would really want to know if um, on the new album or in the future, if you would like to incorporate more of that melodic hardcore sound into your songs. The third part is I've, I was always interested in sound scan numbers back in the... Okay, let me pause on that sound scan. Uh, hardcore stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I think it just um, songwriting is different at different stages, but... Um, doesn't mean it won't make a surface, a, you know, resurface in my, my repertoire again. You know, you just never know. So, yeah. I thought somebody was here for a second. I was like, super loud. Oh, somebody is here. All right, let me continue with this. Hey, and just keeping up with how many albums bands have sold, uh, especially bands I really loved. Um, I know slowly going the way the Buffalo went gold, and you touched on a few others. But I was just curious as if you knew kind of how many albums you've sold all together, or if you kind of keep track on each album. And then the last thing mm -hmm. is a okay, lot of me, bands. Me, um, I roughly know, but I don't honestly keep track. <laughs> That's the thing is like sound scan numbers are so different these days in in how they. Uh, like billboard charts aren't real like the, all that kind of stuff like um oscars and and uh, grammys and things like that those those aren't real um unfortunately i thought they you know i thought they were for a long time but everything is just for the industry it's like prop up the industry um foundations and societies and you know i sound like a conspiracy theorist at this point but um but yeah, I mean, uh, we've sold a ton of records, you know, on SoundScan, um, combined well, you know, well over a couple million, you know, so it's like, I, I just, I just don't, I don't pay attention anymore. Nope, not at all. Some, you know, if somebody tells me, if Tom Chichilla calls me up and says, you know, blah, 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 we sold this amount, I'm like, oh, that's great. Hey, that's awesome. And then I move on. So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at with that. All right. Uh, what's, what else are you asking? Um, uh, your era has been doing a lot of kind of throwback merch. 
And uh, I would love to see some of that on the MXPX site. I know you have lots of designs up there, kind of classic looking, but I wondered if you would ever consider doing a line of kind of vintage looking MXPX merch. I think a lot of people my age would really love that, fans that have uh, been around for 10, 20, 30 years. And so, yeah, I would love to hear any thoughts on that. Thanks so much for all you do. Keep up the great work. Bye. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's a you know a valid question, and uh, I guess I'll just keep it in mind. But uh, I can't promise anything because we're always working on new things. That's the difference between us and, and a lot of our peers is we're working on things that are actually better than the past. Uh, you know, trying to anyway. You know, and it just takes a lot of energy. Um, it's easy. Just I, at some point we will get to the age where we just do throwback stuff constantly. I don't think we're there yet. That's the thing is like, we're still young. I know you're like, no, you're not. But no, we are. We we're we're really moving and shaking. Bad religion's still out there playing live all the time. And you know, they're like 20 years older than us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're focusing on that, honestly, but, uh, eventually, yes, we eventually will get to whatever that may look like in the future. Um, I'm looking forward to it too. It's going to be a very relaxing time in, in our career. All right. But until then, let's keep going forward. Um, excited about the new album, excited about what's coming in the fall. Um, and I think you guys will be too. And actually, um, some of what could be construed as somewhat of a throwback. So get excited, get excited. It's going to fall into that category. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Here we go. Here's uh, let's do one more. I got to go because people are waiting for me. Um, here we go. Hey, Mike, this is Dan. Uh, I've met you a couple times throughout the years. Uh, I'm from Chicago. Uh, anyways, I had a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, one uh, is more upfront and everything. Uh, it's more or less about uh, I see a lot of uh, musicians um, going on Twitch and, and playing like live streams like that. I know you guys were playing a lot of live streams before, uh, especially during the COVID. Uh, but like I see, I'm seeing like Mark Hoppus uh, from Blink, obviously, um, Dead Mouse. Uh, so on and so forth. They're all, I mean, from playing games and everything on Twitch. I was just wondering if you've ever thought about either playing games on Twitch or playing music on Twitch or doing any kind of shows like that, or if you even play games, uh, stuff like that. Um, the second question I have for you. Okay, let me get to that. Twitch, yeah, I, I, like, I like Twitch, but I don't do it. Um, we've thought about it. We've thought about, you know, whether or not we should do an MXPX Twitch or, you know, Twitch for me. And what it comes down to is the more hours you spend on Twitch, the better you can do. And, and if you do a deal with Twitch, which is totally cool, um, a lot of artists have, it's exclusive to Twitch. So you got to keep it on Twitch. You can use some of the things for promo on, on socials, but you can't necessarily live stream anywhere else. So the main reason is, is not because we don't like Twitch or we don't want to like make music out there, but I think it's just the fact that we realize it would ultimately not end in a positive for us. Like it would be like, okay, we spent some time over there, but like, what's it really for? So we're working on things that we're, we really feel like are going to be uh, a bigger picture, positive thing to do. So, um, the live streams in general, you know, we are still going to do live streams in the future. We just obviously haven't been for a while since we stopped doing the between this world and the next live streams. Uh, we may come back and do more. Uh, we will come back and do more. I just don't know when or what that looks like. But uh, we, we do enjoy uh, the medium, the medium. All right, here we go. Uh, so your, your second part of the question is more of a personal one. Um, I've met like I said, I've made like way back in the day throughout the years, um, back when you played like Cornerstone and stuff in Southern Illinois. And, uh, I was, I'd always wondered, uh, you've been a huge influence on me through, uh, my musical journeys. And, uh, I, I guess I was wondering, if, do you ever listen to like your fans demo tapes, like when they ever send them to you, or is that something you're interested in? Um, like, have you ever found any great bands or anything like that that have given you tapes? And uh, would you be interested in hearing mine? 
Uh, anyways, I hope you're doing awesome, man. Uh, I love that you guys are still doing uh, new music, and I can't wait to hear what's next. Uh, have a good one. Dan, thanks for calling. Um, you know, I do listen to the demo tapes now and again. I mean, we used to get them all the time. We had our own record label, and we signed somebody based off of a demo tape, Too Bad Eugene. And we brought them up to Washington. They came to Bremerton, recorded with me at my studio. I hired an engineer. Like, we did a real record. Like, And uh, you can go check it out right now. It's called Too Bad Eugene at Any Rate. I think it's on streaming. But anyway, um, <laughs> there were some... There were some real doozies back in the day. You know, we would throw on a tape, you know, and then eventually it became a CD. But we would throw these on in the van, and, and sometimes it wouldn't even last past, you know, five seconds into it. We were just like, nope, pull it out, throw it out the window. But if it's, you know, we give it a chance usually. So uh, these days it's different. You know, I can't promise there's just too much going on out there. To, to promise that I'm going to listen to something. But the best thing to do is just to like find out where I'm at online and, and, and uh, throw me a link and you catch me at the right time. I'll click on it and I'll listen to it. And and that's the best that this probably going to get, uh, you know, I don't usually click links when they're in DMS like that. You know, it's like, that's uh, something you probably shouldn't do unless you know the person. So, uh, you try it. Try just doing something. Post it online so that it's public, and then s get the link to me online. Whether it's um, I don't know what you use, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, or if there's something else that I don't know about. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, great question. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for calling. Thanks for uh, doing what you do. Thanks for listening to MXPX. Most most importantly, you know, it's like. Whatever it is you love, just keep doing it. Keep listening, and uh, we'll be out there. We're working on on this new stuff, and I think I think you guys should be excited because because <laughs> like I said before, it's going to be our best record yet. I mean, that's it's just got to be. So uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Um, but until then, if you want to call in, leave a voicemail three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. You can always go to mxpx.com if you want to uh, help out what we do, want to support what we do with not just the podcast, but also the band and everything, all the music. And uh, shout out to Bob McKnight for editing, producing the podcast, and being a general, uplifting, good person. All right. Peace out, you guys. Have a good one.